thunderstorm trying to move in but before it gets here we're gonna do story time i already had to do this once and my iphone ran out of space because this is a long one we're gonna try and do it so fast uh it is uh for elizabeth who requested the snow queen another hans christian anderson like uh little mermaid um it is like i said a whopper but it is gorgeous I recommend reading it uh, yourself so that you get all the details that I can't cover in a video without taking half an hour. Um, we'll get it out of the way right now. This is not Frozen. Frozen is not a Snow Queen adaptation. Uh, I think they really just based it on the title The Snow Queen and just did their own thing. I have a theory that my favorite movie, Labyrinth, is actually more of a Snow Queen adaptation. The little girl saves her little brother from... Uh, supernatural royalty and meets all kinds of friends and has adventures on the way uh but see for yourself uh okay fast first we start before we ever meet our heroine when a goblin uh makes a terrible mirror where everything in it is reflected as its worst self everything looks terrible uh and they take it all through the world looking at the whole world in this mirror uh, and laughing at how awful everything looks because they're goblins they think that's funny and they think, you know, it would be hilarious as if we went up to heaven and we looked in the mirror and saw how stupid all the angels look. So they try and take it up to heaven. And uh, as they go higher and higher, the mirror gets slipperier and slipperier in their hands until it falls to earth and shatters into a million, million pieces. Which is even worse because all these little pieces, some no bigger than a grain of sand, uh fly all over the world and they get in people's eyes and in people's hearts and if a piece gets in your eye uh you see the whole world like it is in the mirror uh the worst possible version of itself and if it gets in your heart your heart turns into a lump of ice and you can't feel any love so uh that happens and then fast forward to um gerda and Kay. gerda and k are next door neighbors they're not brother and sister but they might as well be um they were raised from infancy infancy and uh together and uh they play together in a little flower bed that's been set on the gutters between their houses because their houses are so close together that the edges of the roofs touch and so they play in this flower bed that's full of beautiful flowers and roses and um one day uh they're out playing and Kay, the little boy, says, oh, ooh, something's flown in my eye in the wind, and oh, my, my chest feels funny. He's gotten a hit by some pieces of the mirror. And uh, Gerda comes close to see uh, what she can see in his eye, but it's too late. It's already sunk in, and he goes, what are you doing? Get out of my space. I Like, don't touch me. What's wrong with you? Because uh, he doesn't doesn't love her anymore, and he can only see the worst in her. He looks around at the roses, and he's like, "Oh, that one's wilted, and that one has bugs on it, and this is a terrible garden." And he rips all the flowers up, and Gerda cries. Um, he doesn't want to play with her anymore. Uh, all summer, uh, he ignores her, and he wants to only play grown-up games. He only wants to be mean to her, and uh, then the, she holds out hope. You know, she still loves him. The winter comes, and uh, it's a fun game that little kids play, little boys, that they hook, hook their sleds onto carriages that are in the marketplace and make the carriages pull them. He doesn't invite Gerda because he's mean now. And uh, he goes out with his sled and hooks it onto a beautiful white carriage. But the carriage drives right out of town and he can't unhook his sled. And there comes a terrible snowstorm and then when it parts, he can't see town at all. And the person in the carriage turns around and looks at him and goes, oh, hey, little boy, it's the Snow Queen, all dressed in white fur, very Narnia. Uh, why don't you come up here and, and sit with me? You look so cold. He comes up and he's shivering and she kisses him on the forehead and he stops feeling the cold. And then she kisses him again and he forgets all about Gerda and all about his family. And uh, she says, if I kiss you one more time, you're going to die. So I'm going to not do that. And uh, she takes him away to her snow palace to be her little snow prince. Um, back home, Gerda is so sad. Kay never came home 
from playing and uh, everybody like figures he must have fallen in the icy river and drowned and oh she mourns it all winter long and then when the spring comes and the roses bloom in the garden oh she can't stand it and the roses remind her of Kay so she takes her shiny red shoes and she goes out to the river and she tries to throw her shoes in the river and say take my my pretty shoes that I love more than anything in the world and give me back Kay but the river won't take the shoes because Kay didn't drown. She gets in a boat to try and throw the shoes further out in the river, but the boat comes unlatched from the shore and, and floats off down the river. And uh, she doesn't have any oars. She can't get back until she washes up on the shore next to the house of this witch. It's not a bad witch. Uh, not a good witch either. She's like a chaotic neutral witch. And... She comes out and says, oh, look at this pretty little girl, and I always wanted a daughter. Hey, little girl, why don't you come inside? And Gertie tells her all about Kay and about her little quest to find Kay if Kay isn't dead. And uh, the witch is like, oh, what a great story, but you live here now. And she combs Gerda's hair with this magic comb that uh, makes her forget all about Kay and about her family. Uh, but the witch is a smart witch. She also makes a magic so that all of the roses in her garden sink into the ground. Because she knows if Gerda sees a rose, she's going to remember Kay. So Gerda lives in the witch's house now. She plays in the garden. She has a great time um, all summer long. And uh, then one day, the witch puts on her best hat. And the hat has got a dried rose on it. She forgot to get rid of that one. And Gerda goes, hey, roses are a thing. There aren't any roses in the garden. Why not? And she looks for him, she can't find him, she cries, and her tears hit the earth. Not the first time that Gerda's magic tears are going to come into play. And uh, roses spring up out of the ground. And she goes, hey, roses! Ah, Kay! Oh my god, I completely forgot about him! And, uh, oh my god, I wonder if he's dead! And the roses say, no, 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 while we were underground... Uh, we we saw the land of the dead, and Kay wasn't there, so he's still alive. And so she, uh, <coughs> excuse me, she runs away from the witch's house to try to find Kay. She meets a crow, and she tells the crow all about her story. And the crow goes, "I actually have seen a kid that that looks like you were describing. Um, he went to the princess's castle and, uh, got married to her. They're prince and the princess now. Uh, do you think that could be him? And, and she says, well, it might be. And they go to the castle and, uh, meet the prince and the princess. But it's not Kay. It's just some kid that looks like him. And, but the prince and the princess hear her story and they're moved just like the crow. And, uh, they give her a carriage of gold and horses and pretty clothes to go continue her search problem with carriages of gold and pretty clothes is that other people want them too so she's attacked by some bandits and there's a robber lady and there's her little robber daughter and the robber daughter is like hey you can be my best friend and we can do everything together tell me all about yourself she's terrifying she just she carries knives and she's got all of these pets that she just, she just keeps around to torture it's terrible She's got this reindeer that she likes to threaten with her, one of her knives, and the reindeer freaks out. She goes, Haha, it's so funny that he's scared. She's the worst. But she's not such the worst that when she hears the story, she's not a little moved, too. And the reindeer goes, the Snow Queen, I know that bitch. She lives up in Lapland, where I'm from, uh, where it's cold all of the time. And the robber girl goes, well, okay, I guess you can take my new friend Gerda to go find her brother. Uh... My mom's going to get drunk later. Just just leave while she's drunk. <laughs> Wonderful family. So uh, Gerda leaves with the reindeer. And they uh, run all the way to Finland. I think it's Finland first. It's either Finland or Lapland first. And they hit the hut of a Finland lady. And the Finland lady hears her whole story and says, Oh, that's very sad. She writes a note on a fish. Uh, and says, Give this to the Lapland lady. And they go all the way to Lapland, and the Lapland lady reads the fish. And her house is really hot. She keeps it boiling warm like a sauna. So Gerda takes off her, her mittens and her boots that the princess gave her. And uh, they get, you know, all fed up for the journey. And get a couple last minute directions. Um, and the, the reindeer is like, can't you give her, I know your magic, can't you give her like uh, a potion or something that'll give her the strength of ten men? 
And the film lady's like, what does she need that for? Like, she's this innocent little child and she's so pure of heart. Haven't you noticed that everybody you've met has wanted to help her out? Like, that's not normal. She's so precious and pure. She'll be fine. And if she's not fine, there was nothing I could have done that would help her. Thanks, lady. Anyway, um, she could have helped by reminding Gerda to take her mittens and her boots because the, the hot house Gerda leaves her mittens and her boots behind. And so she goes all the way to Snow Queen's castle with no shoes. It's so cold. The snowflakes are getting bigger and bigger as they get closer to the castle and bigger and bigger. And now they're animals and they're like serpents and porcupines because porcupines are terrifying, apparently. And uh, Gerda says the Lord's Prayer because this is Hans Christian Andersen, so we got to get Jesus in here somehow. And uh, her breath turns into angels and the angels protect her from the snow porcupines. And so then she goes into the castle and David Bowie sings a little song. Um, no, he doesn't. Uh, in fact, the Snow Queen isn't even there. She's off putting snow on volcanoes. Um, but Kay is there. He's sitting in the middle of a frozen lake and he's like blue with cold, but he can't feel it. He's not shivering at all. He's playing with little ice pieces because the Snow Queen said, if you can make the little ice pieces spell the word eternity, I will make you your own master. You won't belong to me anymore and I'll give you a new pair of skates. Uh, that's cool. Uh, but he's really focused on this. And Gerd is like, she calls to him, but he won't answer her because uh, he's focusing so much on his little ice pieces because he wants his pair of skates. And she hugs him and she cries magic tears. And they melt the, the piece of mirror in his eyes and in his heart. And he looks around and it's also broken the Snow Queen spell. And he goes, Gerda, where the fuck are we? And uh, she's so happy. Yay, that he's better, and she dances around with him, yay! And uh, they dance so happily that all the little ice pieces that he was playing with get up and dance. And then they get tired, and they lay down, and they spell the word eternity. So now, uh, even if the Snow Queen came back, she can't take uh, Kay because he did her puzzle. And they leave without seeing her, and they go home, and they meet all of their friends along the way, and they say hi to the reindeer, and the Finnish lady, and the Lapish lady. Lapish. Lap Lapland and they say hi to the robber girl who's like am I gonna get my fucking reindeer back and they're like no he went back to Lapland and they say hi to the crow's wife because the crow died <laughs> that was Kristen Anderson ladies and gentlemen and uh they go all the way back home and now they're grown up because apparently this took many years and uh his grandmother's very happy to see him and uh then we end with a Jesus homily that I don't remember about being a little child and pure of heart and shit. Only 13 minutes! Wow! <laughs> that was the Turbo Snow Queen. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, you should go read it for yourself because it's very pretty and poetic. Uh, okay, bye.